Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a full face first impressions. I know my last video was a first impressions or like a review on a product where I tried it out for the first time and today there's another one. I'm so sorry, but I just recently got a bunch of makeup from the brand Koki Professionals. This is what it looks like. I purchased all of this stuff on Walmart. This is like a brand new brand that I've never really heard before. I got a Koki nail polish in an Ipsy bag or a BoxyCharm. I actually think it was BoxyCharm. I got a nail polish from them and I had never heard of the brand and then I had no idea that they did makeup. I went on to walmart.com and I purchased a ton of Koki makeup and we are gonna try them out today for the very first time on camera. This is a pretty affordable brand, I mean it's sold at Walmart. I would say it's around the price point of like Maybelline or L'Oreal, like those kind of prices. So yeah, I'm really excited to do this video today because I haven't tried anything from this brand, just their nail polish. And I bought everything to create a full face of makeup except blush. I don't know if I didn't notice that I didn't get a blush or there wasn't any blush on the website. I, I just, I don't have a blush. Also my tripod broke. I'm currently using it, but I have to be like very careful with it because if not, it will like just fall apart. I have to get a new tripod. Also, I'm sick. I have a cold. I came back from Vegas and now I have a cold. I don't know why that happens to me. I have a really bad immune system. Anyway, let's get started on this video. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with primer. This is the Koki Professional Smooth Glow Hydrating Foundation Primer. I'm not gonna say the name of the brand every time I grab a product because this whole video is about Koki. That's gonna get annoying, so I'm gonna try not to do that. It says it's a translucent foundation primer that hydrates, soothes, perfects, and evens out the appearance of flaws for a long-lasting, healthy-looking complexion. Obviously, I'm gonna have to try this out like separately with other foundations I already own to see if it really works, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna use it. I picked up this one because I do have really dry skin, but Koki does have a mattifying primer, so if you have oily skin, I would suggest trying that one out. So this just feels like a really lightweight moisturizer. It smells like a moisturizer. And by the way, this primer is $10.98, which is, I would say, for drugstore, it is a little pricier, but like I said, it's like Maybelline and L'Oreal prices. Okay, so the only foundation in the Koki range is the Liquid Cushion Foundation, which I'm really excited to try because I don't really have that much experience with many cushion foundations. I just recently purchased the Maybelline one and I haven't tried out the Maybelline Cushion Foundation yet, but this one is from Koki, and I picked up the shade 20W, which I'm assuming means warm. I don't even know what this looks like. I haven't even opened it yet. It swatches a little bit lighter than it looks in there, so it might fit me nicely. Since I've never tried out this foundation before, I usually always apply my foundation with a beauty blender, but I'm gonna try half of my face with a brush and half of my face with a beauty blender. Isn't this the cutest beauty blender you've ever seen? It's not coming off as vibrant on camera, but in person, this is like a chartreuse yellow green. It's so intense, I'm obsessed with it. It came in a set at Sephora. It's like a brand new little set that comes with three beauty blenders. The regular pink one, this amazing one, and then like an orange one, I think, and I got it just because of this color. I love it. But anyway, I digress. I'm gonna take the butt of the beauty blender Stamp it in there, FedEx just got here, the dogs are gonna scream, and I'm gonna go in like that. Okay, so it might be <laughs> too light for me, actually. Nothing a little bronzer can't fix. Let me zoom you in a little. Okay, so I would say with the Beauty Blender, this has like a solid medium coverage. It did cover up the birthmark I have in between my brows pretty good. So I think the coverage is really nice on this product. The only thing I will say is that this is like caking up around my nose. Let me show you. Okay, I don't know if you could even see that. It's getting cakey. For the rest of my skin, I really do like this finish. It's a little tacky, but it looks really natural on the skin. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the rest of my face with a brush. I feel like not a lot of product comes out, but yeah. Okay, so I find that patting it in with the brush is better than rubbing it in with the brush. I feel like rubbing it in makes it look uneven and it kind of gives you streak marks. Finish wise, I definitely prefer the side with the Beauty Blender. So I'm just gonna go over it so that everything blends nicely. I just feel like it blends better into the skin with a Beauty Blender and it doesn't sit on the skin like it did with the brush. If you notice my tripod start to like 
broken. So, okay, let's try out some concealer. This is the Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. I like the sound of that. So, I'm just gonna apply this to my face. I got the shade Fair. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a little bit of that onto my eyes because I didn't get an eyelid primer. I don't even know if they make one. I'm gonna do one eye at a time, just in case. Oh, wow. This has pretty good coverage, holy crap. I thought it was gonna be extremely sheer, which is why I applied so much. <laughs> I don't know, when something says illuminating concealer, I get the impression that it's gonna be sheer and lightweight and a little dewy and not so much coverage. But no, no, no. This has really, really, really good coverage. But I like it. It does feel really sticky. It's a very tacky concealer. Probably because it's not matte, it does have more of a illuminating quality, but it's not greasy. Let me go ahead and do the other side. I'm gonna apply just as much because, you know, we need things to be even. Okay, so first impressions on the concealer, I actually really like it. I mean, I have to try it out more, but initially, I think I really like it. It has full coverage, in my opinion. I mean, I did apply a lot, and I think that with this, a little goes a long way. I don't think you need to do, like, those dramatic triangles underneath the eyes. That was my mistake. But all in all, it was really easy to blend into the skin. I didn't feel like it was too much or too thick or too cakey. It was nice. I'm going to set my under eye concealer so we can put some color into this face. So, to set my entire face, actually, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna set my entire face, it's pretty tacky. I'm gonna use the Translucent Setting Powder. I'm gonna take my Smith 112 brush, swirl it in this bad boy, and set my eyes. Now I'm gonna take that same brush and just dust it lightly on the rest of my face. I didn't wanna take the dewiness away from the foundation, but it was a little bit too tacky to just leave like that. Okay, so I'm gonna be trying out this bad boy. I got really excited when I saw this on the Walmart website. This is their powder contour palette. They do have a cream contour palette that I didn't wanna get because I don't really love cream palettes like for contouring, but this is the powder contour and it looks pretty much identical to the Kat Von D shade and light contour palette. I don't have that one so I can't compare it for you, but it pretty much has like this layout and it looks very, very similar. So I'm excited to see if I like it. So most likely I will take this one to contour with and then I'll probably use this one to bronze my skin a little bit. Normally if I look this pale, I would bronze up with like a shimmery bronzer just to give some like life and color back to my skin. But let's just try this out for, you know, for the sake of the video. <laughs> I'm gonna take my MAC 140S brush. It's like a giant fluffy fan brush, but I use it for contouring. And I feel like this is gonna be too gray for me though. Whatever, let's try it. Dab it off. This hair is driving me bananas. Okay, so I actually think I really like that. I think I created a nice shadow. This is actually an extremely pigmented powder. If you buy this, go in with a very light hand. Really quickly, I'm gonna take that same brush we used for the translucent powder and I'm just gonna mix these two. And I'm gonna see if that like brightens my under eye a little bit. Not really. Okay, with my Makeup Forever 122 brush, I'm gonna take this color and I'm just gonna bronze the skin a little bit. Okay, so I might have applied too much, might have gone a little bit overboard, but that's pretty much the contour and bronze look I got from this. And I love how pigmented these are. I feel like maybe they're a little bit too pigmented, but if you tap off the brush, you will get a really nice, smooth application. I didn't really notice much happening with these two shades, but that's probably because I had already set my under eye concealer. I'm sure this works well to set your concealer, and I really like these two contour powders. This one is obviously a little bit too dark for me, but if you have a deeper skin tone, you might really like these two shades. So I think this is my favorite thing I've tried so far. Now for blush, I'm just gonna quickly pop on some Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in the shade Rose Champagne with my little Tarte T. 
tapered gold brush that I don't know what it's called and it was limited edition and I bought it in a set and I'm so sad because I love it. Okay, so for highlight, I'm actually really skeptical about this. I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this at all. This is their strobing palette. Now, I like the idea of it. I love the packaging, but when I swatch these, they just seem way too sheer, not very pigmented. There's a little bit of glitter in them. So I'm gonna mix these two up at the top. This one's more like white gold and this one's more pinky. Actually, they're not bad. I still don't love it just because I feel like it's not as smooth, but I thought it wasn't gonna be pigmented at all, so the fact that it shows up is really nice. But I don't know, I think it kind of looks a little chunky, just a little bit. I don't know if it's the glitter or the fact that it's not extremely pigmented, so I do have to apply a lot more, and then that just makes it look a little chunky. I don't think it's something you're gonna be able to tell on camera, but in person, it just, it, it emphasizes my texture a little bit too much. So I would say powder contour, yes. Love powder highlight, no. No love. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit more and we are gonna just do the eyes. Okay, so I already have a base for my eyeshadow and I picked up two eyeshadow palettes. I actually really, really love this packaging. It reminds me of like MAC when they come out with these like limited edition sets that have like the smaller eyeshadows. So I picked up this one in the shade Master Essentials. It has a lot of neutrals, but then it has like pops of color. And then I got this one in Bear It All, which is just like jam packed with neutrals. On a fluffy crease brush, this is the Sigma E40. I'm gonna take this shade right here and I'm gonna buff that into the crease. As you guys know, with these first impressions, I don't like to do like something crazy on the eyes. I'm just trying to test out pigmentation. So this is not like a full blown tutorial or anything. These do have some kick up, by the way, like as I'm putting my brush into this eyeshadow, but that doesn't bother me and it's not too bad. Then I'm gonna take a combo of these two shades. One is shimmery and one is matte, and I'm gonna use that to highlight my brow bone. Hmm, I like this. So I'm gonna take this really pretty golden pinky shimmer right here. I'm gonna take this on my entire lid. This is from the Master Essentials palette, and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Not the most pigmented. I have a feeling the mattes are much better, but nothing a little fix plus won't fix. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this reddish shade right here and I'm gonna apply some of that to my outer corners. This is a shimmery eyeshadow and it's probably better if you pack it on the lid versus what I'm doing. That one is very pigmented, I like it. I didn't think it was gonna be so pigmented like this. Not because it's drugstore, it's just because the other shimmer shade wasn't the best. Now I'm gonna go in with, is that not the loudest airplane? This shade right here from the Bear It All. It's like a deep chocolate color, but this one also has a little bit of shimmer in it. And I'm just gonna deepen out the outer corners. Then I'm actually gonna take this dark, dark brown right here and I'm gonna use this as like an eyeliner really close to my lashes. I'm sure you guys see me do this very often. I just love doing this. I feel like it adds a lot of depth to the look. I really wanna recreate Zendaya's look from the MTV Movie and TV Awards, but I have a feeling everyone's gonna do that. I feel like everyone is gonna recreate that look because honestly, to me, it was the most stunning look of the night. Zendaya looked perfect, flawless. Her dress, her makeup, her hair, oh my God, she looked perfect, literally perfect. And I would love to do like a full face of makeup inspired by her makeup, but I have a feeling everybody's gonna do that and then mine is gonna be stupid. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is darker than the one we just used It's a lot more black and I'm just gonna stamp that right at the outer corners But I'm not gonna bring this color in because I want the darkness to stay right here at the end Okay, now I'm gonna go back into this one and very gently I'm just gonna blend that in here on the outer corners just ever so slightly. I'm gonna go back into the first shade we used in the crease one last time with that same fluffy brush. 
And I'm just gonna blend out the harsh lines. Okay, so I wanna add just a little bit more of that red we used. Just like this much, just like this much. You know, just to add a little bit of something there. For my lower lash line, I'm just gonna take these two colors, the first shade we used in the crease and then this darker brown, and I'm just gonna smudge them underneath. I'm gonna start with the dark brown. And now I'm gonna take the crease shade we used and just buff that out. Okay, so that completes the eyes. Before I give you my thoughts, let me go ahead and pop on some mascara. This is the Volume and Length Mascara, so it's supposedly gonna give you both. Zero clumps adds length and volume, and it is smudge proof. We shall see. Ooh, I think I like the wand already. I don't like wands that are too fat because I feel like they get all over my lid. So I'll probably fast forward this part, but I'm just gonna do two coats on each eye and on my lower lashes. Okay, so I totally stamped some mascara right there, but we'll just pretend it's a beauty mark. I also got some back here. I'm a disaster. I have to say I am extremely impressed with the eye products I tried out. I think these palettes are awesome. They swatched kind of like matte, but on the eyes, I think it created a really beautiful look. They blended really nicely. I, I really, 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 really like these palettes. They totally impressed me. And this mascara. I think I'm in love with this mascara. I, I mean, I think it gave me both length and volume. Considering this is under $8, I think it's pretty freaking fantastic. To finish off the look, let's go in with a lip color. I purchased four of their liquid matte powder lippies. It just says lip powders. And yeah, they're liquid lipsticks, I'm assuming. I got three like really neutral shades and then like a vibrant one, and I'm actually gonna go in with this one because I think it would tie in really nicely with the red eyeshadow. This is in the shade Star Status. It's a little bit patchy. I think once you get enough on your lips, it looks nice. Okay, so that is the lip color. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds or like a minute or two to let it dry and then I will be right back. Okay, so my lips are officially set. They have dried. It took about a minute to dry down and it's still like, it's pretty sticky. Feels tacky and, oh, does not cute. And I don't know how I feel about the lip. I've only tried out one color so I cannot give you like my full thoughts. The color is beautiful. As I'm looking in the mirror, I really, really like the color but it did take some building and it is tacky. Oh, and it keeps getting on. See, that's not good. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked my thoughts. I hope that if you were interested in Koki Professionals makeup or if you had seen it at Walmart, if you were interested, I hope this video helped you in some way. I think I really like this brand and I can't wait to see what else they come out with because I love trying out new makeup I've never tried out before. So, yeah. If you want me to do that more often, let me know. I actually purchased a ton of makeup from this brand called Pretty Vulgar. Strangest name, but the packaging is to die for. The packaging is beautiful and I bought all of it on Sephora's website. It's like a new brand to Sephora. If you want to see kind of like the same video you just saw now, only with Pretty Vulgar Cosmetics, let me know. But yeah, that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Brielle, Maybelline. I would say... <clears throat> I just shook that all over the place. Danny on my new chair. <laughs> Is that right? I don't feel good. <laughs> oh, I have to go potty. I'll be right back. Okay. There is a mosquito in here. Okay, so I totally stamped. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill this mosquito. I'm gonna kill him.